Hey guys, Earl at Sumo Bully Kettles back with another episode of our journey. So, in our last episode, uh, we went over our second puppy purchase just to give you a recap. And that puppy was Kaiju, uh, the Lilac Tri, who was off of uh, Godiva and Goya. So, I'll pick up from where I left off. Um, again, quick recap I really love this litter, I love this girl Godiva and Goya. It was a very good pairing, very nice pedigree on both sides, very solid, nice line breeding, heavy on the Markov blood. Um, just look at the faces on these dogs, right? So I like that litter so much that we ended up getting a second dog from that breeding. Now this episode is going to take a twist um, and a little sad for myself. So let me pull up a picture of Cookie Monster. So we picked up a girl and her name was Cookie Monster. Here she is on screen. She is a chocolate Merle. Very beautiful, nice feet. Let me see if I have other pictures of her on our Instagram. Uh, so here, here she was when we got her. Again, beautiful girl. Really sweet, I loved her temperament, in fact, she was my favorite girl on the yard. She really gravitated towards me. Um, just really bonded with this girl. And in our last episode, I went over to pedigree. So I don't, you know, kind of want to repeat myself on that. But anyhow, um, I do would like to shed some light on this one. Um, so anyhow, this is Cookie Monster. We got her as a pup. Let me see if there's some other pictures of her here. Try to find it for you. Uh, there she is again right here in the middle where the thumb is right here nice big girl again there she is pretty as can be there she is with my son so you see her right there yep chocolate mer girl anyhow so I'll share with you our journey, and um, I don't always just want to talk about the wins, but also when things don't go right. So as this girl started growing with us, she uh, her bite shifted. Uh, I loved her feet. I loved her top line. Like everything about her was perfect, but her bite shifted, and she had a slight overbite, and it really made me sad, guys. I really loved her, and. Um, as a responsible breeder, as somebody getting into this, as somebody who is going to have clients and sell dogs, I had a decision to make, right? Do I, you know, deal with this bite issue and breed this dog knowing she has a slight bite issue, slight overbite? Or do it, you know, or do I just scrap, you know, this project with her? And it was a really tough one for me. I waited it out a few months. Um, ultimately, for me, breeding, breeding responsibly, understanding you know what we're trying to breed for, the better to breed, right? Um, to me, that was a major flaw. Underbite or overbite or kink tail. It's not something that I'm willing to take a chance on. I'm not saying I'm right, and I'm not saying I'm wrong. Maybe there's breeders out there that say, hey, you know, slight overbite's no big deal. I can work around that. But for me, I wasn't comfortable, you know. Um, again, we're committed to this project. We're committed to the quality of things. And part of quality control is, is that gut check, right? If you know there's something wrong, you know, and you choose to ignore it or have that kennel blindness to not address that issue and make a hard decision, well then I probably shouldn't be breeding. Tell you the truth, you know. And uh, I brought this up to my breeder, uh, Jose Miranda, very good guy again. I, you know, all, all praises to him. And uh, we had a gentleman's handshake. He said, listen, if this bite doesn't shift back for you, I'll replace the dog. You know, I, I'm not a, you know, if I was just a pet home person, it, it wouldn't have been a big deal because the, the dog is beautiful, as you can see. Beautiful temperament. I love her. My son loves her. In fact, we all cried when we had to let her go. 
Um, ultimately, we made the choice. You know, as much as we loved her, we are committed to breeding quality, right? And you have to pursue your passion and be responsible. You have to be committed to your own cause, right? And and one of the things that we decided when we were going to get into breeding is quality, not color, not anything else. You know, the breed quality, the better the breed, the, the structure, the type. And so, you know, it really sucked. Bottom line, I made a hard decision to, you know, go ahead and, and take Jose's offer. Um, hats out to him for being a gentleman and a you know, ethical breeder to tell me straight up that, hey, if this doesn't correct and correct to your satisfaction, I'll replace the dog. Um, and I respect that. That was, you know, I'm sure some of you guys have bought dogs and, you know, with a bite issue or something you didn't quite like. And uh, you're SOL, man. You're stuck with that dog. You pick the dog. That's your problem, not the breeders, right? So with that said, I really, um, number one, appreciate Jose. And I sing his praises. But two, again, this was a gut check time. So, yeah, we talked about it. Uh, we agreed that, uh, you know, I wanted the dog to go to a family home and pet home the dog. You know, someone who's where she's going to be happy and not bred. Um, because if they're going to breed her, then hell, what's the difference of me of me breeding her versus somebody else, right? In my program, if I see that, I'm not going to perpetuate and continue something that I don't like that. If I bought it, I wouldn't be happy with, right? That's really the main question. Is if somebody bought a dog from me like that and I knew that I was breeding that kind of fault, Right? then my conscience doesn't allow me to be okay with that. That's not cool to me. You know, if somebody purchases a dog from me, I want them to have that sumo bully quality dog, the dog of my vision that I want to create. I want people to believe in my vision, right? And how can I do that if I'm willing to overlook something I know exists that I'm not okay with, but for the sake of money, I'm gonna breed this dog and just say, hey, you know, it'll be okay. You know, hopefully half the litter or most of the litter doesn't have bite issues, right? So with that said, uh, very painful, guys. Very, very painful. Um, and this is the part of uh, breeding dogs that this comes with it, right? And you gotta make tough decisions and the most, you know, outside of what these dogs cost is the attachment right and for us i wanted this girl i love her bloodline and pedigree and her look i wanted her to be one of our foundational females and unfortunately it didn't work out right i could tuck this story away somewhere and never talk about it right knowing i did the right thing uh, however i felt it was important to share it right not always share when things are going well and you know i think there's a lot of value and lessons right this may provide a lot of value for somebody uh, buying a dog to check the bite. Uh, this might provide value for a breeder that knows there's an issue with a bite. Um, and depending on the, who, the, who that puppy is being sold to. For me, if I have a, a litter and one of the dogs has a major issue like a bite, uh, that's a pet home dog right away. I would not sell that dog to a breeder because I know what they're looking for. A pet home is gonna be okay with this dog. She's perfectly fine. She's health tested. In fact, so much so that I even paid for her Embark. 150 bucks for the Embark, uh, health tested, got her all the shots, right? Only to pet home her. But I felt like that was the responsible thing to do because I love dogs. And so what? I'm not, you know, just because she has a bite issue, I'm not gonna get her shots or at her embark or whatever else I would do for any of my dogs I'm gonna do for all of my dogs um, regardless if she was one of my favorites which still breaks my heart this is cookie monster um, love the name her markings so anyhow guys I hope this provides some value for everyone out there buying a dog for breeding buying a pet home dog or for breeders that's why we share this right um, However, on the sad end of this story comes a rainbow. And here it is. So I really wanted a girl from this Godiva and the Goya litter. And I'll bring up their picture again. And it, I was heartbroken that 
cookie monster didn't work out for us. So me and Jose decided to pet home her number one, and uh, he was gonna replace her with another female, right? But he didn't have any females available at the time. So now I have to wait for that dog when he has a female available on the next breeding, which is fine, you know, it is what it is, right? What are you gonna do? Um, however, I respect the fact that he honored his word. Um, what does that mean on my end? That means I gotta sit another six, eight months until he pops another litter and there's a girl there that I like, you know, and anything can go wrong with litters, litter sizes and breedings, we all know that. Nothing always goes as planned in life. And, uh, you know, and sometimes you just have to trust people, you know, and get a good read, get, get a good read on people and just go with your gut instinct, you know. But here's the nugget. Um, there was another girl off this litter who the person that purchased her, something in their life changed that um, didn't allow them to keep the dog anymore and fortunately for me it was a female so ended up replacing uh well actually i bought that dog too i bought um this female uh we called her snickers snickers bar let me see where i got her at so here she is here's our baby snickers you see that structure that head i like her muzzle Nice top line there, man, really nice rear. Really nice rear on her, just like her mom. You could see her there. So out of this sad story comes a positive, actually two positives. Um, so yeah, I was sad about it. However, when you act accordingly and ethically, um, I believe that karma comes back to you. And so despite us being sad, this opportunity came for us to still get a girl from this litter let me try to find a bigger picture of her. Here she is. There she is. So what did I want, right? I wanted a girl off the Godiva and um, Goya litter. And I lost her. I was sad. Um, had a, you know, my number one win is that I bought it from a reputable breeder, Jose Miranda of Blueberry Kennels, Illinois. He honored his word and said he would replace the dog. Perfect, right? Now I'm just out the time. Now I just gotta wait. Uh, the second win I got was the owner of this girl, Snickers, couldn't keep her no more. And it gave me an opportunity to get a female from this litter that I was such a big fan of. So moral of the story, right? And I'll talk more about Snickers on another episode, is that one, I bought a dog, Two, it had an issue. Three, it wasn't self-correcting. In fact, I felt like it was getting a little bit worse. Four, I had to make a choice ethically and consciously as a breeder to keep that girl in my program knowing she had a major flaw. And, uh, you know, I prayed on it, you know, talked to myself, talked to some other people about it, some guidance. I decided to do the right thing and, you know, lose that time, but not so much the investment because he was going to replace the puppy anyway. But I was really sad because I liked the dog and I wanted a girl off that litter, right? And like I said, with karma, it came back. One, Jose honored his word. I'm going to get another uh, girl to replace the girl that I lost. And two, I still got a girl off this litter. And in fact, structurally, she's actually better. She has a, a, a better spread, better. I like her head, short muzzle, really, really, really nice rear. Um, so yeah, there it is, you know, just when you think things aren't going your way and you're a little down about it and you're kind of like, ugh, you know, sometimes in life we take that L, right? And it hurts us. Um, we took that L because we made the right choice. I could have just kept the dog and bred her anyway and not said nothing to nobody. However, I was like, no, that's not what we're in this for. We're in this for the love of the breed, for the love of dogs, you know, to build friendships and relationships with breeders, buyers. And to be honest, right, to operate in, in ethicality, to be committed to your own product, to be committed to excellence and quality. And so by doing the right thing made me sad. However, that karma came back and paid me twice. 
We got a girl from that litter and Jose's replacing that dog regardless. So moral story guys, I guess, you know, do what you know is right, do what you feel is right. And one way or the other, that love always comes back to you. And so that's, that's why I do this series guys. So if you don't mind and you're still watching, like, you know, you're, you're, you're a bully freak like me, like and subscribe our content check out some of our other videos you know we're going to continue to bring these whether we're winning or sometimes take that l and have to make hard decisions we're going to share all that with you and we're hoping that it will help you out or someone else out that can be listening to this message guys uh, again this is earl with sumo bully kennels thank you so much i'll catch you on the next one